All right, guys, this unit is going to be on solving quadratic equations by factorization. Now, to begin with, just to understand the concept, I'm just going to show you graphically, so on a graph, what quadratic equations represent. And then we talk about F1, F2, F3 to help you out. Right. Firstly, when you've got a linear graph, as we've discussed previously, it will look a little bit like this or like that or even like this. A straight line linear graph, positive or, or, or negative. When you've got a quadratic graph, you should know it looks more like a U shape. So it could be there, could be here, could be here, could be here could be here, could even be a negative quadratic like that or like that. Fundamentally, the most important part about this is to recognize when it's linear and when it's quadratic. Now, let's say I have, for example, x squared plus 6x plus 8, but because I wanted to draw it in a graph, it'd be y equals that. Okay, when I look at this, I will say to myself, well, how do I sketch something that looks a little bit like that? What I would do, I'd firstly say to myself, well, that's the X axis, that's the Y axis. How do I find out where it goes through the Y axis? Well, it goes through the Y axis when X equals zero. So when X equals zero, it will tell me where the graph is gonna go through Y. So when x equals zero, zero squared is zero, plus six times zero is zero. So zero plus zero is zero. So y would equal eight. So therefore when x is zero, y is eight. So that means that the graph is gonna look, go through there. Now, because it's a quadratic, I don't know if it's gonna look like this, or if it's gonna look like this, or what it's gonna look like. But it's definitely gonna go through that value there of eight. Now to work out, where it goes through the x-axis, that is when y equals zero. So I'm not gonna rewrite this equation, but put what zero in the place of y. So I could either do zero equals, or I could do x squared plus six x plus eight equals zero. Either way, it's gonna get us the same, same answer. So I'm gonna tell you what these answers are, and then you'll see in F1, and F2, F3, how you can do it yourself. So the answers for this is going to be x <clears throat> equals negative 4 and x equals negative 2. Okay, again, I'll talk about how I got there later on in the video. x equals negative 4, I'm going to place around here. x equals negative 2, place around here. So negative 4, negative 2. So my quadratic graph will look a little bit like that. Okay, so that's the example of a quadratic graph. Another example of a quadratic graph would be y equals x squared minus 10x plus 25. Firstly, I'd look at that and say, well, let me get the y. So when x equals 0, 0, 0, plus so a y is 25. So it'll be up there, 25. Then when I want to work out where, the, where it goes through the x-axis, I make y 0. So x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 0. Again, don't worry, I'll explain this later on in the video. The answers here are going to be x equals 5 and x equals 5 because there's only one value of x equals 5 and x equals 5. I only put one value here. Sorry, not here. Here. Because it's positive 5 this time. So therefore, it will just touch there. So that one there had two roots had x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 2. This one's only got one root, which means I don't go through the x-axis here. I just touch it like that. And then, for example, if I was to look at this one, y equals x squared plus 4x plus 5, well, I'd know that 0, 0, the y value is going to be 5. But then, interestingly enough, I don't have any x values here. I, and you'll see why as I go on for the video, but I don't have any here. So therefore, actually, when drawing this, it will look a little bit more like that, for example, where it doesn't cross the x-axis at all. 
Okay, so that is physically what we're looking at when we're seeing these quadratic equations. It will look like that, but depending on the x values and the y values, that will change what the uh, quadratic graph looks like. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to physically go through how I found those x values. Okay, so let's start with f1. And then I'm going to do f2 here. Then I'm going to do f3 here. Okay, because actually once you get it, it's quite quick. So f1, they might say solve x squared plus 8x plus 12 equals 0. Okay, if I want to solve that. Now, if I said that and I said to factorise that, all of you could do it quite comfortably. The one thing you've got to be careful with, when you see an x squared here, do not dotted line minus 12. Don't try and get x by itself. It's not going to work when you've got an x squared and then an x there. Okay? That's a quadratic, so therefore what you must do is you must first factorise it. So step number one, when you see a quadratic like this, can I factorise it? Yes. Two numbers at times there, so it'd be x plus, in this case, 6x plus 2. Okay, so that'll be factorising that. But remember, we're solving it, so we equal it to 0. Now, this is the important part here. I now separately look at this, and I separately look at this. So x plus 6 equals 0. x plus 6 equals 0, and also x plus 2 equals 0. x plus 2 equals 0. Solve it, minus 6, minus 6, x equals minus 6. That's one of my answers. Solve it, solve it, x equals minus 2. That's the other answer. Now, if that's all the question says, you leave it like that. That's your final answer. The one thing I will quickly say, though, just a point of reference, if you were to want to draw this as a quadratic graph, you can do that. Okay, that is, is, is possible. We've basically here got the x values where it goes through the x-axis in both places. So it'll be negative 6, which, for example, might be here, negative 2, which might be here. I'm just sketching these, remember. Also, just a quick point of reference, to get the value of y, that's when x equals 0. So it'll be 0 and 0. So therefore, the y value is going to be 12. So it's up here. So therefore, the graph will look a little bit like that. But as I said, you don't need to do that in the exam unless it specifically asks you to draw the graph. Another really, really quick example of that is going to be solve and then x squared plus 10x plus 24 equals 0. This time I won't draw the graph of it, I'm just going to solve it. So first step, can I factorise it? Yep. So therefore, x plus 6, x plus 4 equals 0. Separately, x plus 6 equals 0, x plus 4 equals 0, minus 6, minus 6, x equals minus 6, minus 4, minus 4, x equals negative 4. And they will be my two x values. But I'm not going to draw the graph, although I could. Okay? So you couldn't quite see that last bit there, could you? There you go. Okay? I'll move it back down again. Right, F2 is extremely similar. Extremely similar. You've got solve x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. Right, same thing. Can I factorise it? Because it's got an x squared and an x. Yep. So it'll be x minus 2, x minus 2 equals 0. x minus 2, equal it to 0. So I'd add 2, add 2. So x equals positive 2. Same thing. Minus 2 equals 0. Plus 2, plus 2. x equals positive 2. So the same value. So the same value of x is 2. Now, again, you don't have to do this. But if I were to show you on a graph what it looks like, we would know that it's only got one x value. It's got an x value of 2. So that might be here, for example. So I won't find the second one. It's only got one. So I know it's just going to touch it. Now I need to look back at the original. When x is 0, 0, 0, y must be 4. 
So four goes there. So the graph would just touch there and look a bit like that. Okay. Very quick second example without drawing the graph this time. Solve x squared minus x minus 42 equals zero. Can I factorize it? Yes, you can. So it'd be x minus seven x plus six equals zero. And then separately, we'd look at that x minus seven equals zero x plus six equals zero. This time I try not to go off the page. So add seven, add seven. X is positive seven. Then I would minus six, minus six, X equals negative six. Okay, can't quite see that again. Right, X equals negative six. Okay, last two examples. Very quick last two examples. Solve X squared minus 64. Okay, same process. I can't just add to both sides, doesn't work. Let's factorize first. So look, I look for, can I factorize? Yep. Yeah. X minus eight, X plus eight equals zero. Separately, we'll go through it. X minus eight equals zero. Add eight, add eight. So X equals positive eight. X plus eight equals zero. Minus eight, minus eight, X equals negative eight. Right, again, I'm just gonna show you how you would draw this one in the exam. If they ask you to do it, obviously. I would look at that and say, well, x equals eight. So that would go around here. X equals negative eight would go around here. 64, obviously it's not to scale. So let's just say it's here. Sorry, negative 64, my fault. Because if x is zero, then y would be negative 64. So that's gonna be down here. Again, not to scale. So the graph will look a little bit like that, okay? If I were to draw it, if I just asked to solve it, I don't need to draw it. Okay, last example. Solve x squared minus 25 equals zero. Can I factorize it? Yeah, x minus five, x plus five equals zero. So it'd be x minus five equals zero, add five, add five x equals positive five, x plus five equals zero, minus five, minus five, x equals negative five, and they are my two answers there, okay? So you've got F1, F2, F3. You can practice by drawing the graph, but you don't need to if it just says to solve it. All right, good luck.